bit late how it will look like this talk. And first I thought that it will be, I thought that it will be like Slavoj Zizek receiving just a yes and no question, but as usual responding in a long way, and you clicking on three times faster on YouTube. Then I saw that we are getting really late, and it was the same scenario, but I said probably you will just skip to the end of the video. Um, but now they gave me extra time, so I'm happy with that. Um, okay, today we, we will be talking about data diodes. Um, <laughs> my touchpad, aha, uh -huh, okay, here it is. Um, is there anything, aha, uh -huh, A. No. Huh? The, the other one? Ah, yeah, okay, extend it, sorry. Okay. It's okay, extend it, it'll be fine. Um, I will do it like this, it's fine. Okay, I, I have done only a couple of uh, slides regarding um, this topic. Uh, hello, my name is Luca, again. I live on the fourth floor. Um, I'm working as a system engineer and I just build stuff. I'm not a red teamer. I'm not a very good blue teamer either. Um, I'm just building stuff and I like it and I'm enthusiastic about it. Um, so I have the Launitz Adva, it, it's a workshop for kids from sec primary and secondary school in Nova Gorica. I also, uh, I'm also a volunteer for 20 years uh, building wireless network, free wireless network in Nova Gorica. So if you come to Nova Gorica, you will for sure get uh, some signal from Wolan, Nova Gorica, EU. And, and I, I also have a small NTP server running for almost 20 years on the same hardware. So it's really fantastic hardware. Um, so I build stuff, and I'm enthusiastic about stuff, and this data diode concept uh, is one thing that I just wanted to share with you, because currently I'm working in one company um, where we need such solution. Well, we can set up it by using, uh, I was once in a fantastic session that Andras had about IP tables and Linux, and yes, we can set up such a scenario like data diode does, by using uh, Windows Fire, oh, sorry, not Windows, uh, Linux Firewall and IP tables on it uh, by, by understanding the concept of related and established sessions. But today we are talking about hardware version of data diode. So uh, first about diodes, okay? It is, it is a quite old technology and uh, you see that it was invented or the concept was, was developed in eight, uh, 1874. Um, the idea is of one direction. You probably use diodes all, all over the place, probably light emitting diodes that needed another almost 100 years to get the blue one because the blue one is very difficult to, to make. Green and red, they were invented, I don't know, I think in 50s. But to get to a blue one, it took another 30 years. Uh, what does this, uh, how does this relate to um, data diode? Just by the concept. Because in the diode, the current flows only from one way to, to the other, and not, not, not vice versa. The same is here with data diode. So if you have, a, for example, uh, special systems somewhere, and you don't want anyone to get there, you can set up, of course, some kind of firewall between, in between. But if you really don't want to, um, to allow anyone to get there, even if the firewall has some kind of security problems or misconfiguration or someone, or, or if it was configured correctly, but later on someone misconfigured it, you can set up some kind of hardware solution that is called data diode. So, you can also do it poor man data diode with three media converters like I have here, and I will show, I will show you how you can do it. Um, data diode has also its history. 
So it's not some kind of new, pro uh, new concept. You saw that I, s I found some kind of document that uses these fancy fonts and also scissors in, the <laughs> in, this, in these diagrams. Um, so you see that people came to this idea in the time of RS-232 communications. So you can do it also there. But if you want to have some kind of faster connectivity that we are uh, currently having, uh, then probably you will switch to something faster than RS-232. Uh, okay, these are harder data diodes that you can buy. What is the main difference between this and this poor man scenario here? Cost. What? Cost. cost, not only cost, also protocols that can pass. Which protocols can pass if I don't have a receive data? UDP, UDP protocol. There are also some other protocols that can go through, but for example, TCP cannot go through because we don't have any response. Handshake will never happen, so it will not work. But people are really smart, and they have created some kind of software, some proxying for those TCP acknowledges that should come back if you want to establish the connection. And this magic that is done by software inside hardware diodes is the thing that makes them expensive. You can find on GitHub projects that allow you to combine media converters and um, Raspberry Pis so you can build something like this. But if you decide to make something really absolutely um, reliable and certified, because probably the companies that would like to buy something like this, they need certified equipment because they need to um, comply with some standards and so on. So if you want to uh, make, for example, I don't know, uh, uh, um, I, I saw today when I was preparing that for example, uh, French, uh, French, uh, I don't know which company, I, I will show you a bit later. Uh, just a second, probably I have it here. Aha, here I have it. So a French network for um, uh, information security, they, they, their agency forbidden to use firewalls to connect any class three networks such as railway switching systems. They only allow so-called uh, unidirectional technology. So data diodes, unidirectional, only one way. So um, the problem with this poor man scenario that I have here is that we today, because we are also limited with time, we cannot make a bidirectional concept. We will make a unidirectional concept and I will show you now how we will do it. So, but you, as you can read, we have the technology that allows us to do also bidirectional um, concept of data diode for some protocols and also limited on bandwidth. So it costs more if you want to have higher bandwidth in the bidirectional concept. Okay, low budget data diode. Uh, most of you are using um, wireless, uh, no, uh, wired fiber optics equipment at home probably and you probably saw something like this. Um, I will connect to my, so I will, I will show you um, how it works. Just a second, let me connect. Uh -huh. Something is going on. Uh -huh, okay.
Okay, I will skip this part. I, I, I wanted to stream um, to, to show you what I will connect and disconnect, but you will need to use by, by how it is called? Bin binoculars, okay. It's a it's small thing, but I don't know. Unfortunately, I cannot stream right now from my phone. It doesn't matter. Um, we have now a communication between our IT device, so device in not secure network, let's say not secure network, on which I am turning on the syslog. I will just jump to the second stream and you see the syslog here. So every Linux device is sending syslog and every network device and so on, so it's a UDP traffic. And if I connect, I just, I will just put here some cables so I will have some port ups and port downs happening. Okay, so you saw that I connected something and syslog sent data from the red, from secure network that I have on the left side, your right side, to my right side that is your left side. And we have the information that is coming on and it's fine, but I am also able to ping my secure device. So currently bidirectional communication is working. Okay, fine. Now we will change that. So I will allow a red device to send data to the blue one but blue one will not be able to respond in any way, okay? So, on this media converter here, I have two arrows. So this one is out and this one is in. So I will remove this one. And, on, and in this side, I will remove this one. Okay, the communication is off. Because we need, for our transceiver to work, we need to have the link up. And how can we do it? We need the third one that is not connected anywhere. You see that the UTP that should come, uh, array 45 that should come here, it's not connected to anywhere. But I will use only these two cables to bring the link up again. Okay, let's do it. So, TX is the blue one. Huh, interesting. Okay, oh my God, fiber on the floor. Don't do this at home. Okay, Eric's go into TX. Tick. And TX go here. Okay, great, lights are on. Communication is still not going and will not go anymore because we have now only one direction really connected. From this one to this one, but from this one to this one, it doesn't go anymore. Because from this one goes to this one, okay? And this one is not connected anywhere. So now, if we try again, you hey, our syslog is working. So we are able to uh, receive from the other side, but the other side is not able to anyhow answer or anyhow connect to our protected network that we have on your right side, okay? So this is the simplest concept of data diode. What can we transfer over this UDP channel that we can establish here. Well, in fact, it is not a channel. What can we transfer over this UDP? We can also transfer files. In fact, no problem, you can also transfer files. Um, but it will be a, lit a little bit less um, reliable as if you do it with TCP, of course. You can stream video. So, for example, for video surveillance, surveillance you, can use, you, you can use such scenario. Um, how I came along with this data diode? It's not a thing that I knew for, I don't know, um, long time. Practical cases. I work for a company that makes some machinery, and this machinery is sold all over the world, 
And we are now evaluating the concept, how can we set up these machines at our, at our customers' locations and protect them from the customers' networks? 100% protect them. Or, 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 or let's say better than with a firewall that is managed by someone. And this concept seems really nice for our case because the data that we are sending out from this machinery can be, you, can be transferred via UDP. So for us, this can be a really nice solution with which we can um, achieve such a level of security. Good. Um, I was preparing to go fast. I don't know how fast it was, but um, if you have any questions, I would like to hear from you. Ma well, now it's already connected. <laughs> Only if you want to see arrows. But I also have, because I didn't know if it will help, it, if, if we will be able to do it or not, I did a screenshot. So on the, on the, mid, on the transceiver, you have those small arrows, so you can see what is the TX and what is RX. And what we did, exactly what we did now here is this picture. So we have connected TX from the red side to the blue one and RX from the, and, and the TX from the blue side to the dummy middle converter here, okay? So you can set up such diode uh, for around 100 euros, um, and it will do the job. Okay, it looks like this. If you have short cables, it's even nicer to uh, see how it looks like. Okay, any questions? Yes. You cannot request. The server must send this data. Yes, for example, syslog will send the log when something happens. For example, in my case, I used a MikroTik router. So when I connect the, um, uh, the cable inside, it is an info message in the log, and this info message is conver well, converted. It's not converted, it's also sent, not just logged, but also sent via syslog facility to, to um, this small syslog program that I'm running here. So yes, you cannot request the data. The data will flow or it will not flow. If nothing happens, nothing will, will get over. But if, it, it, if something happens, you will receive it. So in this case, it's a pure UDP. If we go into the Wireshark here, we can also see what will happen. Aha, the problem here is that there is no broadcast. It's not working. Well, we receive broadcast on this side but we cannot reply when, when the machine asks, hey, where is this IP? Nobody will, will answer. But we can see that, we can see some, we don't see anything. Ah, okay, we see some. We see some data that is coming through. So yes, um, you see link up, link down, and so on. But we need to filter it out. So yes. Any other question? Um, no, the colleagues did it by using uh, Raspberry Pis that were then used as media converters. You have multiple versions of this, but all these GitHubs are quite dusty. For five, seven years, nobody touched them, but probably they work still. So um, if you want to try and test, just type uh, data diode in GitHub and you will find this, uh, you will find this uh, projects. Okay, any other thing? Yes.
Uh, it's the second thing that we would like to evaluate also for us. Um, technically, you should be able to drive also something else over UDP, um, but I didn't found any project or something that would mention that. But I think that if, we, if it took 100 years to get to uh, red, blue, and green diode, also data diodes have also their their things in the future. Because if you want to really make secure networks, this is one thing that can be really interesting as a solution. And I wanted just to share it with you, because you are young forces here, and maybe some GitHub project will flourish again, I don't know, <laughs> based on this uh, session. Okay, if you don't have any other questions, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank the colleagues that invited me and hope to see you uh, next year. Thank you, Luca.